Demon World. Underestimates the Enterprise's warp drive to overload it and explode. Not my engine. It's just a simulation, Scott. Captain Patterson says better luck next time, sir. Behaving in this manner does not suit a Starfleet captain. Save new game. Been seeing ghosts and boogeymen, eh? I find that a little hard to believe. Starfleet recognizes our freedom to worship and believe as we see fit, Captain. I am surprised that you do not share that feeling. Rest assured that Starfleet Command will be informed of your rudeness. Demons? Gates of Hell? This is the 23rd century. You're wasting the time of a starship capable of destroying this planet with campfire stories? No wonder you were dumped out here in the middle of nowhere. You may have no respect for our beliefs, but I hope you will look beyond that. You look rather cold, Bones. I'm not cold. I'm freezing. And that damn transporter just had to set me down in the middle of a snowdrift. A centimeter of snow does not technically constitute a drift, Doctor. And doctors say that patients complain too much. I've never seen snow like this before. This is great. You mean you've never built a snowman, Ensign? I've never even thrown a snowball. Do you think anyone would mind? Well... Later, Ensign, we have work to do. This planet's as beautiful as everyone says it is. The trees, the fresh air, the freezing cold. Come on, Bones. The cold will improve your circulation. Some people get too much circulation. Most high prelate and given, I am honored to meet you. I consider it my divine duty to assist you in any possible way with the spawn of the devil. Captain Kirk, I had no idea we were blessed with one of our order in the ranks of Starfleet. Ensign Everett seems to be rattled by the attack of the Klingons. There is nothing at the moment for me to do there. Captain Kirk is fatally shot by a Klingon. Game over. Wait. Demons, Klingons, avalanches. What's next? The Wicked Witch of the West? That is not logical, Doctor. It wasn't supposed to be logical, you green-blooded falcon. Why does everything have to be so damn logical? The firefight is over, Jim. I think you can put that away now. Jim, I give up. Jim, this isn't the OK Corral. Now put that thing away. While you're at it, why don't you just violate the Prime Directive? Jim, put that thing away. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a target. Have you lost your mind, Jim? <sighs> Stop pointing that damn thing at me, Jim. Jim, the next time you need medical help on a snowball... Bones. I'll probably end up coming along. I'm sorry I let you down with those Klingons back there. I should have been paying more attention. Just don't make that mistake again, Ensign. Those Klingons give me the willies. They always have. My sister was wounded by them in the Chozon ambush. We've all had our share of conflict with the Klingons, Ensign. The Organians told me that one day, humans and Klingons will become good friends. I wonder if I'll ever live to see that day. Does your tricorder say the cave is warmer, Spock? It is not logical for me to use my tricorder to determine the cave's temperature, Doctor. I do not see what purpose it would serve. Spock, everybody talks about the weather. We've got to get this to Brother Chubb as quickly as possible, Jim. Thank you. You're most kind. May I suggest using a more diplomatic approach to questioning the colonists? Force will gain us little, if anything. You are interested in my little... Looks like a pile of junk if you ask me. Sir, it may be dangerous. Let me try it. I think I was shocked, sir. That was definitely a mild shock. Ouch! That hurt! <laughs> <laughs> He's dead, Jim. He's dead, Jim. I'm sorry, Jim. 
Ensign Everts is beyond my help. I guess this isn't such a great planet after all. Jim, I think you need a vacation real bad. Welcome to our home. Thank you for repairing our Somnambutron. Stop. You're trespassing on Federation territory. Violence is hardly necessary, Captain Kirk. We owe you a debt for your service to us, and are more than willing to peacefully coexist with your kind. Some advanced civilization. There is no need for disrespect, intruder. Our race is old and powerful, wise in many things, like our guardians, for example. Well, what happens next? There is no need for violence, Captain. We are a peaceful people. Our patience is exhausted. Now feel our wrath. You meet your death at the hands of a race that could have been your ally. What a waste. Better luck next time. We have read your report on the problems at Pollux 5 and evaluate your performance at 63%. You and your crew received one commendation points. A satisfactory performance, Captain. But there's still room for improvement. Hi, Jack. Message from Starfleet, Captain. On screen, Lieutenant. The USS Enterprise is to report immediately to Beta Miamid. The USS Masada has failed to report as scheduled. Determine nature of delay and take whatever measures are necessary. Set course for Beta Miamid, sir. There's an unidentified ship closing rapidly. Weapons on and shields up. Raising shields. Arming weapons. The unidentified ship refuses to respond, sir. Message coming in, sir. On screen, Lieutenant. Leave the Beta Miami system immediately. You're interfering in Elasi affairs. We are conducting a search and rescue mission for the USS Masada. It was last reported in this system. We cannot leave until we can confirm its location and condition. So be it. You have been warned. Prepare to die. <laughs> The enemy ship's initial intercept course was from the last known position of the Masada. I suggest we orbit the planet for a closer sensor scan, sir. Lowering shields, Captain. Disarming weapons. There she is, Captain. She does not appear to be seriously damaged. Her shields are up, and 27 life forms are aboard. We can work together on this, Elasi. How about beaming some of the hostages over as a show of good faith? What? Lower my shield so you can beam over a war party? I'm not stupid, Captain. We'll play by my rules. So long as the shields are up, Captain, our hands are tied. The Enterprise can overpower the Masada and take her, but the pirates would have all the time they need to kill every one of the hostages. Will you send over data on the whereabouts and conditions of my falsely accused clansmen languishing in your dungeons, Captain? Forget it, Elasi Seraph. You'll be the next one languishing on a Federation penal planet unless you drop your shields and surrender to me immediately. Your jokes are dying, Captain Kirk, and so are the Masadans in the audience. Captain, there is now one fewer life form on the Masada. My shields remain up, Captain. I don't wish to kill any more hostages, but I don't want to hear from you again unless you're ready to exchange prisoners or send me the data I request. Elasi out. Killing the ship, Captain. Do you have the data back in turn? Not yet. We're still working on it. Captain, there is now one fewer life form on the Masada. Killing the ship, Captain. Do you have the data back in turn? Captain, there is now one fewer life form on the Masada. Killing the ship, Captain. Not yet. We're still working on it. Captain, there is now one fewer life form on the Masada. Hailing the ship, Captain. Do you have the data packet, Kirk? Not yet. There's no work Captain, there is now one fuel life form on the side. Message from Starfleet, Captain. Kirk, you have completely mishandled this situation with the Masada. I hereby order you to break off negotiations immediately before any more damage is done. Your behavior will be reviewed for disciplinary action. I'll be frank, Kirk. Starfleet expects more of you than that. Try to do better on your next assignment. Hi, Jack. Hailing the ship, Captain. Greetings, Federation Imperialists. 
I am Elasi Seraph, and I have claimed this ship as a blow for freedom against Federation tyranny. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. Listen, Elasi, hand over the ship and hostages now, or things are going to get very nasty. Well, Kirk, someone is about to pay the price for insolence. Captain, there is now one fewer life form on the Masada. Will you send over data on the whereabouts and conditions of my falsely accused clansmen languishing in your dungeons, Captain? Forget it, Elasi Sereth. You'll be the next one languishing on a Federation penal planet unless you drop your shields and surrender to me immediately. Your jokes are dying, Captain Kirk, and so are the Masadans in the audience. Captain, there is now one fewer life form on the Masada. My shields remain up, Captain. I don't wish to kill any more hostages, but I don't want to hear from you again unless you're ready to exchange prisoners or send me the data I request. Elasi out. Captain, we could use the command prefix code to lower the Masada's shields briefly, long enough for one transporter burst. Sending prefix and lowering the Masada shields. That's a phaser, not a flashlight, Jim. Well, Jim, there's one thing I can tell you. I don't like Colossi. I can't see them winning any popularity contests, Bones. They can forget about my vote. This is just like their raid on Damocles Station. Hard, fast, and dirty. When this operation is complete, Captain, we should have Mr. Scott, or Transporter Chief Kyle, come here to assist with the repairs. Let's not look too far ahead, Mr. Spock. This is a mess now, isn't it? My daddy would have sent me to bed without supper if I'd done something like this. Can't say I like the decor. Hey, what are you doing here? I don't like the looks of this, Jim. They've turned this freighter into a prison barge. You've set off some type of booby trap. The force field protected you from the blast, but everyone inside the brig is dead. I'm just a security officer, sir. My god, what have we done? All of the crewmen are dead, Captain. We came here to save these people. Now look what we've done. The controls are set for just inside the bridge door, Captain. Mr. Spock, you're a genius. I wouldn't go that far, Jim. But I do have to congratulate you, Mr. Spock. Now we can really risk shooting our atoms around the universe. Is this really necessary, Jim? Analysis, Lieutenant Christensen. Security analysis, sir. If we transport onto the bridge, we'll have the drop on them. Assuming Mr. Spock has the transporter working properly. If we could get past the force field on the door of the bridge, we should be able to surprise them for sure. Since we have a bomb, Captain, we could rearm it, transport it onto the bridge, and perhaps the Elasi will flee into the hallway. Then we could capture them. And any hostages on the bridge will be killed when the bomb goes off. No, Jim. That's inhuman. To say nothing of the possible damage to the bridge controls. My God, Jim, what have you done? You've killed them all. You probably blew up the whole damn bridge. Captain, the ship will crash into the planet in 18.32 seconds. I would recommend leaving the ship immediately. You cold-blooded emotionless. Bones, later. Kirk to Enterprise. Captain, you're alive. Beam us out of here. Bye, Captain. Message from Starfleet, Captain. On screen, Lieutenant. Kirk, you have completely mishandled the situation with the Masada. You killed the hijackers on the Masada and all the hostages as well. Your own crew had to transport you out of the wrecked ship before it went utterly out of control. 
your record of Maverick stunts will be completely reviewed for consideration of disciplinary action. You have much to answer for, Captain Kirk. Consider yourself lucky that you're allowed to retain your command until we get back to you on this. Starfleet out. I'm going to have a word for you, Spock, if we appear inside the door. Freeze. Don't even think about it. Foolhardy words, Kirk. You have underestimated me at every turn. Warning. Orbital decay detected. Warning. Warning. Orbital decay detected. Warning. Load a previously saved game. Freeze. Don't even think about it. Foolhardy words, Kirk. You have underestimated me at every turn. Warning. Orbital decay detected. Warning. Scotty, beam down a security team to the bridge. We have regained control. Warning. Orbital decay detected. Warning. Mr. Scott, beam us out of here. Aye, Captain. Love's labor jeopardized. Priority message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. A raid across the Romulan neutral zone has placed Starfleet Research Station Arc 7 in jeopardy. Proceed in... Watch out, sir. It looks like the Romulans have taken control of the lower decks. Ah! Load a previously saved game. This level appears deserted, sir, but I'm worried about a Romulan counterattack. They outnumber us. Ah! 
Jim, this lab is incredible. What I would... This is a very well-equipped laboratory, Captain. Perhaps Dr. McCoy could be of... When you're finished admiring all the equipment, Bones, maybe you can help us figure out what's going on here. <coughs> it's what I was afraid of, Jim. I think Spock is getting worse. <coughs> the virus has spread to me, Captain. I suggest you concentrate your efforts on the problem. Game over. Load a previously saved game. The machine synthesizes a quantity of colorless goo. You're wrong, Spock. Look, the virus culture has been eliminated. That's why it's clear. It'd be more useful for me to see how the virus might grow in the presence of a limited quantity of ammonia gas. <laughs> That's not working, Jim. That's not working, Jim. Thank God it's you, Jim. I'm so glad you came. Thank you for saving our station, Jim. It's about time someone got here! Fascinating equipment. I believe I have seen this sort of equipment someplace before. We're testing the effect of radiation on combinations of simple and complex molecules. We're trying to see what new forms of life are developed and how they compare to our own early development. Fascinating. He's too weak to talk, Jim. He needs medical attention. The Romulan Preax stirs weakly, then begins to get up. He has been cured. He's severely dehydrated, but he'll live. I have called off the Romulan attack on this station, Kirk. I believed your virus was some kind of deliberate attack, but your great honor and compassion have convinced me otherwise. Save it for someone who's buying, Preax. Leave Federation space immediately or we'll scatter your atoms across the quadrant. Fah! And I thought you a man of honor. You need not worry, Captain Kirk. Your lack of warrior spirit stinks even across the vacuum of space, and I am eager to be free of it. Goodbye, Carol. Goodbye, Jim. Well, gentlemen, let's go home.